Happy Sunday, everyone. Here is another longer hand shaving video. I only did the palm of my hand and my thumb in the last long one. So here I'm going to do the first two fingers on my left hand. Still trying, uh, trying to show the footage real time. So it takes a lot longer to share in multiple videos instead of like zooming it all up and uh, putting it in one video. Sometimes um, I get questions like, do you do your fingers? And the answer is yes, but I don't always put it in the same video. I hope you're having a good Sunday. The weather is gorgeous here. My husband is out mowing the pasture like all day. It's quite a task and he's going to have to spend a few days on it. Um, and I got to clean the whole house. I'm avoiding that. So here we are. <laughs> Hang out with me. I did pretty good um, on these fingers. You know, I was lauding myself for doing such a great job on my thumb, but I did eventually cut myself. You'll see a little cut on my middle finger later in this video, and I'll talk about it a little more when that happens. But in the meantime, um, I continue to get tons and tons of questions asking whether I could get some sort of skin graft or operation to replace this skin. Um, and the answer is that it's been tried, but it has not been successful. Um, to make it more comfortable for the patient, doctors haven't tried to like remove the entire skin of the foot or the hand, but instead just a section, like the entire heel. You skin the whole heel and put a skin graft on it. And um, unfortunately, because this is a mutation in the DNA, if you think about how DNA works, your DNA is the same in all your cells. Um, unless it's been mutated like you have had cancerous cells where the DNA has been damaged. But nonetheless, your DNA is consistent throughout your whole body and it tells the different parts of your body how to grow. And so when the skin graft ultimately gets older and begins to shed off like skin does, as new skin grows up from beneath like skin does, it grows back the way it's genetically predisposed to do. So you can't just run away from the genetic mutation by replacing the skin. It will grow back the way it is programmed to do by the way the DNA is. So I don't claim to understand DNA and genetics thoroughly, but you know, a simple grasp of the fact that your DNA programming is consistent across your whole body means that however you're designed to grow by a how your DNA exists is how you're going to keep growing, even if you try to change things. Just like if you have a predisposition to have freckles or moles, you could use various techniques or surgeries to get rid of those things, but your body will continue to make them because that's how your skin grows. Anyway, I do want to mention though that there is one promising technology that's still in the works. It's probably going to be a while before this is readily available to everybody on the planet, but the CRISPR gene editing technology is absolutely mind-blowing. I do not even understand how it works, but essentially what they're figuring out how to do is alter DNA using like light and sound frequencies essentially to change how your DNA is structured, which is just amazing. A little scary to think about the ramifications like Peekable could probably decide exactly how their children will look in the womb. And that can all be a little gray area. What are we doing here? Do we really want to engineer a perfect human species? What about our differences make us who we are? You know, all that conversation. But, but for cases like mine where you have a genetic mutation that is irreversible or in cases like people who have cancer or other genetic conditions where just simply repairing or changing the DNA would actually resolve all the problems, this is a really incredible technology. And most importantly for me, recently in the last couple of years, scientists in the CRISPR laboratories were able to give a mouse EPPK, epidermolytic palmoplantar keratoderma, my condition. They were able to forcefully mutate that mouse's keratin 9 gene, and he ended up with calluses on his little tiny paws. And then they were able to, using the gene editing technology while the mouse was alive, 
reverse that mutation and repair the keratin 9 gene in his DNA. And his paws began to grow like normal again and stop producing the hyperkeratinized skin. Can you believe it? So that is incredible. Um, that technology, oh, there's a little cut. I just realized it as I was shaving. I was like, oh crap, I did this. So I'll talk about that in a sec. But anyway, this mouse was able to be healed while alive. These, these tests have been successful in like Petri dishes, but that was one of the first totally live subjects. So that, that's promising for me in the future. You can see that when I do cut myself, it's rarely like a cut. It's like I've shaved just slightly too low. Now here I'm going to try to work around the cut and leave it be, but still get the skin all around it. And I have to come back in and blot it a couple times until it uh, scabs over. Uh, and it will stop bleeding after, I don't know, five minutes or so. It's just like barely oozing blood. But essentially it's like skinning your knee or getting carpet burn or something, uh, some way in which you've you've just delicately shaved off a tiny bit too much skin and so blood is coming to the surface. Um, that is what happens sometimes when I'm shaving. If I just miscalculate a little bit, I will get a tiny patch that is bleeding. And it's not like the blade dug into my skin and gave me like a cut, like a paper cut. It's more like I just shaved off a little too much and now the blood can come out. I've told everyone before, and I'll reiterate it here, that when I'm shaving my skin, I'm not shaving it off. I'm making it thin because I do need to keep that skin. And so unfortunately, sometimes even without even realizing I've done it, I've gone slightly too thin in a space and it will bleed for a moment. Some people have questions like, do you even bleed? And absolutely, yes, the the blood is down there. And that's also why my hands look red when I'm done shaving. <clears throat> they look red because um, the skin is so thin and it's a bit more transparent than normal skin. So as I make it really thin, you can see through it to the blood flow underneath. Anyway, um, what I need to get my hands on is some iodine, like that burning, stinging stuff they give you at the nail salon. If they accidentally make you bleed, they'll like put a little iodine on it and it immediately stops bleeding. I get my hands on that. Anyway, up next sometime later this week, the last two fingers. <laughs>